When you need a neutral sans serif typeface, which one do you pick? Most people either pick the default font on their word processor, or they pick Helvetica, or one of its many derivatives. I think more of us should try a Franklin Gothic derivative instead. And here are some of my recommendations. I recommend Libre Franklin if you're making something like a poster. Or if you need your text to be big and condensed, there's League Gothic. If you want something for body text, Public Saw is the way to go. Or Source Saw 3 if you're looking for something friendlier, maybe paired with Oswald for a more condensed heading. All these fonts are free to use, and their download links are in the description below. If you're after paid fonts, Create Gothic Next is a great option. Though I think my favorite alternative to Franklin Gothic is American Grotesque. If you want to use Franklin Gothic in body text, I recommend Benton Song. Or if you want something more friendly, Whitney is great for both body text and for applications like wayfinding signage. Purchase links to all those fonts are in the description below. You can stop watching this video now, but if you want to know more about those typefaces and why you should consider picking Franklin Gothic over Helvetica, keep watching. When everyday folks want to write something in a plain neutral sans serif font, for at least the last 30 years or so, they've picked a hugely popular Helvetica or one of its derivatives. That means Helvetica on Mac OS, Arial on Windows, Nimbus Saw or Liberation Saw on Linux, and Roboto or Arimo on the web. These are all classified as neo-grotesque sans serif typefaces. What does that mean? Well, there are several ways to group or classify fonts. The one I'll be talking about here is based on historical design movements and covers only the Latin script. In my oversimplified explanation of the system, there are five classes of sans serifs. Grotesque fonts were the first sans serifs to be created, and this was in the 1810s. The idea was to take a regular serif font, chop off its serifs, and create something nice and clean with only just the core shape of the letter form. These were primarily display fonts, meaning they were used on billboards, posters, and flyers. The fonts were called grotesque because they looked a bit odd for the time. The word grotesque here meant bizarre, and not like how we use it these days to mean ugly. Neo-grotesque fonts came next. They ironed out the irregularities and inconsistencies found in many grotesque fonts, creating a more rational design. So where a grotesque uppercase G might have an angled terminal, a corresponding neo-grotesque terminal would typically be horizontal. Since they weren't as idiosyncratic as grotesque fonts, neo-grotesque fonts could be used comfortably in body text, in addition to being used for display purposes. Let's ignore the rest of the classes for now and drill down into the differences between grotesque and neo-grotesque fonts. We'll do that by comparing Franklin Gothic, a grotesque from 1902, to Helvetica, a neo-grotesque from 1957. At first glance, the two fonts look pretty similar. Then you notice that Franklin Gothic, which is the one on top, has a curly single-sided tail on the uppercase Q, angled terminals in the apertures like that of the lowercase c, a wedge cut out of the stem at the bottom of the lowercase b, and a downward curving bowl on the lowercase a. Minor differences like these make Franklin Gothic slightly asymmetrical, a little quirky, and somewhat inconsistent. In fact, that wedge cut stem appears only on the lowercase b and nowhere else in this entire typeface. Those quirks are one of the reasons why grotesque fonts got left behind when most of us moved on to these neo-grotesque fonts that I talked about earlier. Neo-grotesque fonts are considered the most neutral, which means many of them can be used in everything from posters to signage to documents without changing the tone of the message. Kind of like adding a neutral color item to your outfit. That said, neo-grotesque fonts lost their go-to status around 10 or 15 years ago when Microsoft Office changed its default font to Calibri and high-quality, open-license, free fonts like Lato, Noto, and OpenSong became easy to use on the web. Since then, the definition of a neutral font has expanded to include these friendlier fonts, which are classified as humanist sans serif. Humanist fonts were a reaction to the active neutrality of neo-grotesque fonts. The aim with these was to reintroduce a calligraphic or handwritten feel to sans serif typefaces, which is what makes them look friendlier. These days, though, our default and go-to fonts are heading back into all neo-grotesque territory, with Aptus replacing Calibri as the default font in Microsoft Office, and Inter continuing to gain popularity on the web. My pitch to you in this video is to be a little less neutral, a little less boring, and to consider trying a more interesting grotesque font instead. For example, you could go back in time from Simon and Garfunkel's Folk Rock Helvetica 
to Art Blakey's Franklin Gothic Blues. Or instead of defaulting to Helvetica, like in this Ford ad, you could try Franklin Gothic, like in this Campbell's Tomato Soup ad. You get the picture. Assuming you're on board with this plan, let me first give you the bad news before we move on to the good news. When most of us want to use Franklin Gothic, we run into three big problems. Franklin Gothic is three fonts in a trench coat. Franklin Gothic isn't readily available. And the Franklin Gothic fonts most of us have access to aren't very good. Let's take those one at a time. The Franklin Gothic we know and love from posters, flyers, newspapers, and album covers is actually just a single heavyweight font with three different widths. Lighter weight versions of Franklin Gothic, which you might have seen on album covers, are actually entirely separate fonts, though they do have the same basic design. This table of ATF Gothics from the 1950s illustrates the situation nicely and gives me a chance to tell you the Franklin Gothic story. In 1902, type designer Morris Fuller Benton created Franklin Gothic for American type founders in just one extra bold display weight. Then in 1903, he designed Alternate Gothic, a compressed and moderately bold version of Franklin Gothic that was made available in three numbered widths. Finally, in 1908, he designed News Gothic, which is a lighter weight version of Franklin Gothic that could be used as body text. So when I say Franklin Gothic, what I'm really referring to is this triad, hence three fonts and a trench coat. And it's only those three fonts, by the way, Monotone Gothic and Lightline Gothic from this table both got absorbed into the main Franklin Gothic font as its lighter weights. Big problem number two is that the Franklin Gothic triad isn't readily available to everyone. Decades after Franklin Gothic was introduced, when the printing industry was moving from metal type to digital type, several type foundries created digital versions of those three ATF Gothics. But while digital versions of Times New Roman, Palatino, Helvetica, and Century Gothic were included in pretty much all desktop operating systems, Franklin Gothic wasn't. The only bundled version of Franklin Gothic you get is in Windows, and that is just its medium weight. You have to purchase Microsoft Office 365 before you get access to the book, Demi Bold, and Heavyweights. To get a bundled version of Alternate Gothic, you need to buy SoftMaker Office, which is an alternative to Microsoft Office. Fortunately, SoftMaker's version of Alternate Gothic is free for personal use, or you can buy a full license for just 38 Australian dollars. News Gothic is the least accessible of the three. You get it as part of Microsoft Office, yes, but a weirdly limited set in which there's only the regular bold and italic font, but not the bold italic font. This brings us to big problem number three. These fonts that most of us have easier access to aren't very good, and normal people won't find them easy to use. Even though you get Franklin Gothic through Microsoft Office 365, it actually doesn't work very well in that app. For example, you can't just click the bold icon in the menu bar or use the Ctrl B keyboard shortcut in Word to make your text bold. To get genuine bold text, you have to manually switch from the book weight to the demi bold weight. Most normal people won't know to do that. Also, you think a version called book would be good for body text, but it's actually not that great. The text set in Helvetica Neue on the left looks so much better than the text set in Franklin Gothic book on the right. The Franklin Gothic text block looks uneven and unrefined compared to the Helvetica text block, and the text in the bottom right paragraph looks particularly weak in that small size. The story isn't much better when you switch to News Gothic empty either. Here the unevenness looks even worse, especially in the smaller size text block. So even though you should be able to use both Franklin Gothic and News Gothic in body text, they're still really only good for titles, headings, and other big text applications just like Alternate Gothic. This is when we get to the good news. There's absolutely no need to use those three fonts because there are many better versions of the Franklin Gothic triad out there. Let's start with the free ones. A good free alternative to Franklin Gothic is Libre Franklin. Immediately you can see that the text set in Libre Franklin has a more even tone to it, but body text isn't what you'd use Libre Franklin for. I did an image search for the word poster, and this is one of the simple ones that came up. The version on the right is my copy of that design in which I've used Libre Franklin, and actually I think mine looks better than the original. So Libre Franklin is great for large text. It comes in nine weights from thin to black, which is much more useful than the original single weight of Franklin Gothic. You can download Libre Franklin for free from Google Fonts. If you're after a more compressed font, which would be an alternative to alternate Gothic, your best bet is League Gothic. You would never use this in a text block, of course, so let's go to another simple poster I found online. Funnily enough, as I started to copy that poster for this video, I realized that the original design itself used League Gothic, 
So that worked out nicely. I paired my copy with Libre Franklin, so you can see how well the two work together. Lee Gothic is great for large condensed text. It comes in two widths, one of which is even more condensed, and you can download it from the League of Movable Type website. Now we come to my favorite font on this list, Public Song, which is a fantastic news gothic alternative. The text on the right that's been set in Public Song looks more solid and is much easier to read than the text set in News Gothic Empty on the left. In fact, I think a block of text set in Public Song is easier to read than a block of text set in Helvetica. If nothing else, the letter forms of Public Song are less ambiguous, thanks to the little feet on the lowercase letter L. Public Song also works brilliantly in big text applications, as you can see from the poster on the right. Compared to Libre Franklin, Public Song looks a little sharper on the page. Also, it has some elements of neo-grotesqueness in its design, with horizontal terminals on the G and the S, and a longer horizontal stroke in the middle of the uppercase E. Public Song works brilliantly in both body text and in large text. It is based on Libre Franklin and was created by the US government's Web Design Systems Group. It has nine weights and you can download it from the US WDS website or from Google Fonts. Another great alternative to News Gothic is Source Song 3. The text set in Source Song 3 on the right is more even and more friendly. And like Public Song, it is less ambiguous with a slightly shorter uppercase I and feet on the lowercase L. What's cool about Source Song 3 is that it's part of a font family, so it pairs perfectly with its serif counterpart, Source Serif 4. Though if you want a matching condensed pairing, try Oswald. Oswald, like Lee Gothic, is a free version of Alternate Gothic, so it pairs perfectly with Source Song 3. Source Song 3 also looks great in that poster design. Though when you compare it to Libre Franklin, you can see that it goes in a slightly more humanist direction, which makes it look friendlier. Source Song 3 is great for friendly body text. It comes in 8 weights and you can download it from Google Fonts. Meanwhile, Oswald is great for titles and headings. It comes in 6 weights and you can also download it from Google Fonts. To summarize, if you want big text, go with Libre Franklin. If you want big condensed text, go with League Gothic. If you want something that's also great for body text, go with Public Song. And if you want friendly body text, go with Source Song 3, which pairs nicely with Oswald for headings. So those were our free options. Now let's look at some paid solutions to our big problems. Speaking of paid solutions, you could just buy a better version of one of the Franklin Gothic Triad. The highlighted fonts are the three I've already talked about, but I think we can do better. An excellent alternative to Franklin Gothic is Trade Gothic Next. Trade Gothic was Linotype's response to American type founders Franklin Gothic. Designed in metal type by Jackson Burke in 1948, it was digitized as Trade Gothic Next in 2009. The good news is that you get a decent part of the Trade Gothic Next family with Microsoft Office 365, including a couple of inline and rounded versions. If you want the full family, that'll cost you just over a thousand Australian dollars. While I do really like Trade Gothic, my favorite version of Franklin Gothic is American Grotesque by Klim Type Foundry. This is a 2024 revival that undoes the changes made when Franklin Gothic was first converted to digital type. Even 45 years ago, Helvetica was hugely popular. So to make Franklin Gothic more competitive in the market, the designers of the 1979 digital version tweaked Franklin Gothic to be a little more neo-grotesque. When designing American Grotesque, type designer Chris Sowersby went back to the original 1902 design of Franklin Gothic and did things like reshortening the middle horizontal stroke in the uppercase E, re-adding the dome on the lowercase a that had been flattened in the 1979 digitization, and increasing the angle of the terminals and the apertures, like those on the lowercase c, so they match the original font. American Grotesque is expensive, but it's very much worth it. If you're looking for an excellent alternative to News Gothic, I recommend the popular Benton Song. Like with American Grotesque, type designer Tobias Frere Jones based Benton Song on Morris Fuller Benton's original design. He started work on this in 1995, and there have been several extensions to this font family since then. Depending on which versions and subfamilies you buy, Benton Song will set you back anywhere between 800 and almost 4,000 Australian dollars. While all those fonts are great, the version of Franklin Gothic that I've actually paid for is Whitney. Like Benton Song, Whitney was designed by Tobias Frere Jones, though this was about 10 years later in 2004. Whitney merges News Gothic with Frutiger, one of my all-time favorite fonts, so the resulting design is a little more humanist. That manifests in a few different ways. Some horizontal and vertical strokes now end at an angle, 
like the second horizontal stroke in the uppercase F, the chin of the uppercase G has been smoothed out, the dots or tittles on the lowercase i and j are circles instead of squares, and the lowercase c has much more angle terminals. Whitney comes across as simultaneously more elegant and more friendly. Its basic version isn't very expensive, though the cost does climb the more versions of it you buy. Now those were my favorites, but here are some good recommendations from designer Jeremiah Schof, creator of the excellent Flawless Typography Checklist. Alternate Gothic, Trade Gothic, and Whitney we've already talked about. The only other font from this list that I have access to is GT America, from Grilly Type. This is a really interesting blend of 19th century American Gothic fonts and 20th century European Neo-Grotesque fonts. It was designed by Noel Loy and released in 2016. It does cost a bit, but it is really cool. So to summarize, my recommended paid alternatives to Franklin Gothic are Trade Gothic, which I think is a better digital version of Franklin Gothic, American Grotesque, which is a more accurate Franklin Gothic revival, Benton Song, which is a large family that's also great for body text applications, and Whitney, which is a friendlier version that's great for body text and for signage. At this point you might be wondering why I've only talked about Franklin Gothic and News Gothic alternatives, but I've ignored Alternate Gothic altogether. That's because all the fonts I've talked about basically have Alternate Gothic built into their font families. Trade Gothic has condensed and compressed versions, American Grotesque has condensed and compressed versions, Benton Saw has wide, condensed and compressed versions, and Whitney has narrow and condensed versions. Before I finish up, there is one honorable mention I want to talk about. You remember this table I showed you earlier? Well, there's technically one more ITC version of Franklin Gothic called ITC Franklin. This one was designed by Font Bureau's David Burlow in collaboration with ITC. It basically takes all the problems I had with the Franklin Gothic font that's bundled with Microsoft Office and fixes them. For example, it replaces the book weight with a light weight that actually looks good in body text. The medium weight looks more even too. Put the 1979 Franklin Gothic and the 2004 ITC Franklin side by side in a poster and the differences are quite subtle. But the ITC Franklin poster on the right is just slightly easier to read. To see why, you have to zoom in on the minor differences like the slightly increased taper on the horizontal stroke of the uppercase J, or the narrowing of the numeral 1. The biggest difference, though, is that ITC Franklin is a much more complete and fleshed out font family. That alone makes it easier to use than Franklin Gothic. I'll bring my argument to a close by saying that using neutral Helvetica is easy. Consider working just a little bit harder, and use something more interesting and characterful, like Franklin Gothic instead. Yes, Franklin Gothic isn't as practical or versatile as Helvetica but it can make your design look less bland. Like when you go from Stevie Wonder Helvetica to Aretha Franklin Franklin Gothic. You'll be in good company when you do. Franklin Gothic has been used by everyone from the Ramones to Roxette, and from Iggy Pop to Minor Threat. If you're not inspired by album covers, then how about the text crawl, captions, and title cards in Star Wars? Those were all set in Trade Gothic in the original 1977 release and then changed to News Gothic in the 1981 re-release. But, if you're still feeling uncomfortable about dropping Helvetica, then, in the humble words of Mia Gravidor, from the 2009 Old El Paso Taco commercial, ¿Por qué no los dos? That's what Run DMC did back in 1986, when they used both Franklin Gothic and Helvetica in their album artwork. Download or purchase links to all the fonts mentioned are in the description below. There's also a link to my blog post in which I've got a transcript, photo credits, and links to additional resources. I think I'll make one of these videos every month or so, so I'll see you then. Bye! Hello again, to those of you who noticed there was still time left before the video ended, hopefully you're like me, and you hate it when someone leaves you hanging. So let's go back to the oversimplified historical sans serif type classification discussion that I started, but never finished. Geometric fonts are grotesque fonts constructed out of geometric shapes, like circles and squares. They came out of the Bauhaus design movement from Germany in the 1920s. The idea here was to design as minimal a font as possible. Neo-humanist fonts, on the other hand, are an evolution of humanist fonts. These have a more mechanical or machine-constructed feel to them. They come across less as hand-constructed and more as digitally designed, so they look the most modern to our eyes. The differences between these classifications isn't always clear-cut, and I only really covered the bits that were relevant to this video. Suffice to say, that these classes all have a slightly different vibe from each other, which I guess is the point I wanted to make all along. The final thing I'll say about type classification is that there isn't just one system to classify typefaces. 
The system I've been talking about in this video comes from art history and covers only the Latin script. A more modern, inclusive, and pragmatic system is Cedars Plus. I'm not going to go into that now, but if you want to learn more about this and about font pairing at the same time, check out designer Oliver Schondorfer's font matrix video on his channel. And now for real this time, bye!